Hey folks, I know I am just an old guy telling stories, but please leave a like and subscribe before we start. Let's enjoy in today's stories. I've always considered myself a pretty average guy. I'm 30 years old, living in Kansas, Texas, with a solid job at a tech company. It's not the most thrilling life, but it's stable, and the pay is good enough to keep me comfortable. I have my own house, a decent car, and a small group of close friends. On the surface, it's the American dream, but sometimes the monotony of my day-to-day -day life gets to me. There's only so much excitement you can find in a routine that revolves around coding, meetings, and the occasional night out with friends. That's probably why, on a particularly boring evening, I found myself diving into the dark corners of the internet. I had heard about the dark web before, of course. Stories of hitmen for hire, black markets, and all kinds of illegal activities. It sounded like something out of a movie. I never really believed it could be real, but curiosity got the better of me. I wanted to see it for myself, to peek behind the curtain and witness the underbelly of the internet. Setting it up was surprisingly easy. I downloaded Tor, the browser that allows access to the dark web, and did a bit of research on how to navigate it. There were plenty of guides and forums out there filled with people eager to share their experiences. Some of the tales were downright terrifying, but I chalked most of it up to exaggeration. It was a chilly Friday night when I finally decided to dive in. My house was eerily quiet, the kind of quiet that makes you hyper aware of every creak and groan. I remember feeling a strange mix of excitement and nervousness as I fired up Tor and started exploring. The dark web wasn't quite as visually impressive as I had imagined. Most of the sites were bare bones with simple text and basic layouts, but the content was something else entirely. I stumbled across marketplaces selling illegal stuff, dangerous illegal stuff, and stolen data. There were forums where people discussed everything from conspiracy theories to illegal hacking. It was like stepping into a parallel universe where the rules of society didn't apply. But I wasn't interested in buying anything or getting involved in any illegal activities. I just wanted to see what was out there. After a while, I found myself in a chat room. It was one of those places where anonymity was prized above all else. Everyone had usernames like Dark Knight or Shadow Walker. The conversations ranged from mundane to outright disturbing. People were discussing all sorts of things, illegal hacks, scams, even methods to disappear without a trace. It was a rabbit hole and I was falling deeper by the minute. One thread caught my eye. It was about framing people for crimes they didn't commit. It seemed like a bizarre and twisted hobby, but the people in the chat room were dead serious. They shared detailed strategies, from planting evidence to creating fake online personas. The level of detail was chilling. They talked about it with a casualness that made my skin crawl, like they were discussing the weather. I should have stopped there. I should have closed the browser and walked away, but I didn't. I kept reading, drawn in by the sheer madness of it all. It was like watching a train wreck. You know it's horrible, but you can't look away. Hours passed, and before I knew it, it was well past midnight. My eyes were tired and my head was spinning, but I couldn't tear myself away from the screen. That night, I went to bed with a sense of unease. The dark web was real, and it was far more sinister than I had ever imagined. But I told myself it was just a glimpse into a world that had nothing to do with me. I was just an observer, a tourist in a land of shadows. Little did I know my curiosity had set something in motion that would turn my life into a nightmare. Despite the unsettling feeling that lingered from my initial dive into the dark web, I couldn't shake the urge to return. It was like an itch I couldn't scratch, a compulsion to explore the twisted depths further. Maybe it was boredom, Maybe it was something darker within me, but I found myself back in that same chat room the next night. The usernames were different, but the conversations were just as disturbing. People were sharing tips on evading law enforcement and, most chillingly, framing innocent people. It was a step-by-step -step guide to ruining someone's life. 
The nonchalance with which they discussed these things was terrifying. It was as if humanity's darkest impulses had found a haven in this hidden corner of the internet. As I scrolled through the messages, I felt a mix of horror and fascination. It was a morbid curiosity that kept me glued to the screen. I read about planting incriminating evidence, hacking into social media accounts, and even creating fake identities to fabricate alibis. The level of detail and planning was mind-boggling. These weren't just random ideas. They were meticulously crafted strategies. One particular user, going by the name Silent Justice, seemed to be the ringleader. He or she was exceptionally knowledgeable and disturbingly articulate. Silent Justice posted long, detailed guides on how to execute these schemes flawlessly. From hacking into someone's phone to planting digital footprints, nothing was left to chance. The precision and ruthlessness were chilling. I should have logged off. Every rational part of me screamed to shut down the computer and never look back, but I was in too deep. I was hooked on the adrenaline, the sheer insanity of it all. It was like being on the edge of a cliff, looking down into the abyss and wondering what it would feel like to fall. Then came the message that would shatter my sense of detachment. It started innocuously enough, just another suggestion in the sea of madness. Silent Justice posed a question to the group. Who should we frame next? A flurry of responses followed, each more outlandish than the last. But then amid the chaos, a single message appeared. Let's frame Scott Marshall from Kansas, Texas. I froze. My blood turned to ice and my heart pounded in my chest. That was my name. My exact name. I stared at the screen, unable to believe what I was seeing. How could they know? It felt like the walls were closing in around me, like I was being watched. Panic set in. I immediately closed the browser and shut down my computer, my hands shaking. I sat there in the dark, my mind racing. It had to be a coincidence, right? There was no way they could know who I was. But the more I thought about it, the less sure I became. What if they did know? What if they were coming for me? Sleep was impossible that night. I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, my mind replaying the message over and over. Every noise, every creak of the house made me jump. I felt exposed, vulnerable. My home, once a sanctuary, now felt like a prison. The next morning I tried to rationalize it. It had to be a coincidence. Scott Marshall wasn't an uncommon name. Kansas, Texas, while specific, wasn't exactly a bustling metropolis. But deep down, I knew it was more than that. The precision, the timing, it was too perfect to be random. Over the next few days, I became paranoid. Every stranger on the street, every unfamiliar car, felt like a threat. I was constantly looking over my shoulder, expecting the worst. My friends noticed the change in me, but I couldn't tell them the truth. How could I explain that I had been targeted by faceless strangers on the dark web? I thought about going to the police, but what could I tell them? That I was browsing illegal forums and stumbled upon a plot to frame me? They would laugh me out of the station, or worse, arrest me for accessing the dark web. So, I did the only thing I could think of. I locked all my doors and windows, kept my phone and computer off, and tried to stay out of sight. But the fear never left. It was always there, lurking in the back of my mind, whispering that I was not safe. Days turned into weeks, and the initial panic began to fade, replaced by a dull, persistent anxiety. I told myself it was over, that I was just being paranoid. But deep down, I knew better. The dark web had a way of reaching out, of finding you, no matter how far you ran. And for me, it was just the beginning. The unease lingered like a shadow, creeping into every corner of my life. Even as I tried to return to my normal routine, the sense of impending doom was always there, gnawing at me. Work became a distraction, a way to keep my mind off the terror that had taken root in my psyche. But the dark web experience had left a mark, 
a constant reminder that the world was not as safe as I had once believed. It was a Wednesday evening, about three weeks after that fateful night, when my life took another terrifying turn. I was sitting in my living room trying to lose myself in a book when my phone buzzed. It was an unknown number. I hesitated for a moment, then picked it up, hoping it was a telemarketer or a wrong number, anything but what my paranoid mind feared. Scott Marshall. The voice on the other end was calm, almost friendly. Yes, who is this? I replied, my heart starting to race. There was a brief pause, then the voice continued. We've been watching you, it's time we had a talk. The call ended abruptly. I stood there, my mind reeling. Who were they? What did they want? A cold sweat broke out on my forehead. I felt like a trapped animal, every instinct screaming at me to run, to hide. That night, sleep was out of the question. I paced my house, double-checking locks and peering out of windows. Every sound made me jump. The phone call had shattered any illusion of safety I had clung to. They knew who I was. They had been watching me, and now they had made contact. The next morning I decided I couldn't keep living like this. I needed to do something, anything to regain control. But what could I do? Going to the police was still not an option. I had no evidence, nothing concrete to show them. Just a phone call and my own paranoia. I went back to the dark web. I know it sounds crazy, but I was desperate. Maybe I could find some answers, some way to understand who was targeting me and why. I fired up Tor and navigated back to the chat room. This time I was more cautious, using every anonymity tool I could find. The chat room was as active as ever. The same kinds of discussions were happening, but I was looking for something specific. I wanted to find silent justice. If anyone had answers, it would be him. But as I scrolled through the messages, my heart sank. Silent Justice was nowhere to be found. His account was gone, like a ghost in the night. I was about to give up when a new message popped up in the chat. Looking for Silent Justice? Meet me at the usual place. I felt a chill run down my spine. It was as if they knew I was there, searching for them. I hesitated, my fingers hovering over the keyboard. Then, against my better judgment, I typed a response. Who is this? The reply was almost immediate. Meet me at the usual place, midnight. I had no idea what they meant by the usual place. It was clearly a message intended for someone else. But I had to follow the lead. It was the only way I could think of to get to the bottom of this nightmare. At midnight, I sat in front of my computer, waiting. I wasn't sure what to expect. Then, a new link appeared in the chat room a hidden URL. I clicked on it and it took me to a private chat room. It was empty except for one user. Watcher. Who are you? I typed, my hands trembling. Just someone who knows the truth, Watcher replied. You shouldn't have come back, Scott. You're in deeper than you realize. My heart pounded as I stared at the screen. What do you want from me? It's not about what we want. It's about what you need to know. You've been targeted because you stumbled onto something you shouldn't have, but it's not too late. Leave now, and maybe they'll forget about you. Who are they? I asked, desperation creeping into my voice. Watcher didn't respond for a long moment. Then, a final message appeared. You're part of the game now, Scott. Run if you want, but you'll never truly escape. The chat room went silent. I sat there, staring at the screen, feeling more lost than ever. What game? Who were these people? And why was I their target? I shut down my computer and sat in the darkness, the weight of the situation pressing down on me. The dark web had drawn me in, and now it was holding me captive. I was caught in a web of shadows and there was no clear way out. The days that followed were a blur of fear and paranoia. I barely slept, barely ate. I was constantly on edge, expecting the worst. I stopped going to work, too afraid to leave my house. Every knock on the door, every unexpected sound, sent me into a panic. And then, one day, it happened. I was walking home from the grocery store trying to keep my head down and avoid drawing attention. 
As I turned the corner onto my street, I noticed a black van parked nearby. My heart skipped a beat. I quickened my pace, trying to stay calm. But as I got closer, the van's doors swung open and two men jumped out. They were coming for me. Instinct took over. I dropped my groceries and ran, my heart pounding in my chest. The men chased after me, shouting for me to stop. I could hear their footsteps getting closer, the sound of their breaths ragged with effort. I didn't dare look back. My only thought was to get to my car. I reached it just as they were about to catch up. I fumbled with the keys, my hands shaking, but managed to get the door open and dive inside. I locked the doors and started the engine, peeling out of the parking spot just as they reached the car. The chase was on. They followed me through the streets, the van's headlights glaring in my rearview mirror. I drove like a madman, taking sharp turns and running red lights. I could feel my heart in my throat, the fear driving me to the edge of reason. I knew that if they caught me, it would be the end. Somehow, by sheer luck or desperation, I managed to lose them. I took a series of random turns, eventually finding myself in an unfamiliar part of town. I parked in a dark alley and sat there, trembling, trying to catch my breath. I couldn't go back home. They knew where I lived. They had found me once, and they would find me again. I needed to disappear, to erase myself from their sights completely, and there was only one place I could think of to find help, the dark web. Sitting in the dark alley, my breath finally slowing to something resembling normal, I realized I was out of options. My life had become a twisted game of cat and mouse, and I was the mouse running out of hiding spots. The dark web had led me to this point, and ironically, it seemed to be the only place I could turn for help. I drove to a cheap motel on the outskirts of town, paid in cash, and holed up in a dingy room with peeling wallpaper and a bed that smelled faintly of mildew. It was the kind of place where people came to disappear, if only for a night. I set up my laptop and logged back into Tor, my hands still trembling. Navigating back to the familiar chat rooms, I found what I was looking for, a forum dedicated to people who wanted to vanish. The discussions were filled with advice on how to erase your digital footprint, fake your own death, or simply disappear without a trace. It was a last resort for people like me, who had run out of other options. I posted a message in the forum, detailing my situation and asking for help. It was a desperate plea, and I felt a pang of shame as I hit send. I was admitting to strangers on the internet that my life had spiraled out of control, that I was scared and didn't know what to do. To my surprise, I received a reply almost immediately. The user, going by the name Ghost, offered their services. They claimed to be an expert in making people disappear with years of experience and a long list of satisfied clients. It sounded too good to be true, but I had no other choice. I replied asking for details and pricing. Ghost's response was quick and professional. They outlined a plan that involved creating new identities, forging documents, and relocating me to a different country. The cost was exorbitant but I had some savings and was willing to do whatever it took to escape this nightmare. We arranged a time for a secure voice call. At the appointed hour, I dialed the number Ghost had provided, using an encrypted app to ensure our conversation couldn't be traced. The voice on the other end was calm and confident, with a faint European accent. Scott, I can help you, Ghost said, but you need to follow my instructions exactly. There is no room for error. Do you understand? Yes, I replied, my voice shaking. I'll do whatever it takes. Ghost laid out the plan in detail. I was to transfer the payment in Bitcoin to an anonymous wallet. Once the payment was confirmed, Ghost would send me a package with everything I needed. New IDs, passports, bank cards, and a plane ticket to a country where I could start fresh. The package would be sent to a P.O. box I was instructed to rent under a fake name. The next few days were a blur of frantic preparations. I sold my car for cash, packed a small bag with essentials, 
and withdrew as much money as I could from my bank accounts. Every moment was filled with a gnawing fear that the men in the black van would find me again before I could escape. Finally, the package arrived. Inside were all the documents and tools Ghost had promised. There was even a detailed guide on how to assume my new identity, complete with backstories and tips on blending in. I felt a strange mix of relief and dread as I held the fake passport in my hands. This was my ticket to freedom, but it also meant leaving behind everything I had ever known. I followed Ghost's instructions to the letter. I dyed my hair, changed my appearance as much as possible, and left my motel room in the dead of night. My heart pounded as I made my way to the airport, using a circuitous route to avoid detection. Every shadow seemed to hide a threat, every passerby a potential enemy. At the airport, I moved through security with my new passport. My nerves stretched to the breaking point. I expected to be stopped, questioned, dragged away by unseen forces, but nothing happened. I boarded the plane, took my seat, and stared out the window as the engines roared to life. As the plane took off, a wave of emotions crashed over me. Relief, fear, sadness, and a strange sense of detachment. I was leaving behind my old life, my old identity. Scott Marshall from Kansas, Texas was no more. In his place was a new person, a ghost created by necessity and desperation. The flight was long and exhausting. I barely slept, my mind racing with thoughts of what lay ahead. When we finally landed, I stepped off the plane into a foreign land, with nothing but my wits and the contents of Ghost's package to guide me. I found a small, cheap apartment in a city where no one knew me. I got a job under my new identity, keeping my head down and trying to blend in. The fear never truly went away but it dulled over time, replaced by a cautious hope that maybe, just maybe, I had escaped my pursuers. But even as I tried to build a new life, the memory of the dark web and the men in the black van haunted me. I knew they were still out there, somewhere, and that the game was far from over. Months passed in my new life, each day a test of my ability to remain inconspicuous. I went by the name Michael now, and every decision, every movement, was calculated to avoid drawing attention. I worked a mundane job at a local diner, kept to myself, and lived in a modest apartment in a nondescript part of the city. On the surface, I was just another face in the crowd. But the fear never fully left me. Every time I saw a black van or an unfamiliar face, my heart would race and my mind would spin into overdrive. I knew that the men who had chased me were still out there somewhere and that they might never stop looking. One night after a particularly long shift, I returned to my apartment to find a letter slipped under my door. My stomach twisted with dread as I picked it up and saw that it was unmarked. With trembling hands, I opened it and read the short typed message inside. We haven't forgotten you. You can't hide forever. My blood ran cold. They had found me again. My carefully constructed new life felt like it was crumbling around me. I knew I had to act quickly. I couldn't wait for them to come for me. I needed to disappear again, this time for good. I contacted Ghost through the encrypted app, explaining my situation in a series of frantic messages. Ghost's reply was swift and reassuring. There was a final option, a last-ditch effort to erase myself completely from the grid. It was risky and expensive, but I had no other choice. The plan involved faking my own death. Ghost outlined a meticulous strategy to make it look convincing. There would be a staged accident, a body double, and enough evidence left behind to satisfy any investigation. It was the ultimate vanishing act, and it had to be flawless. I followed Ghost's instructions meticulously. Over the next week, I made the necessary preparations, gathering materials and setting the stage. The body double was arranged through a contact Ghost provided, a man of similar build who was terminally ill and willing to sell his identity for a large sum of money. It was a grim transaction, but it was my only hope. 
The night of the accident, I drove to a remote location outside the city. The body double was already there, waiting in a rented car. We switched clothes, and I gave him my personal belongings, my wallet, keys, and phone. He was to drive the car off a cliff into a deep ravine, ensuring that it would catch fire and obscure any identifying features. As I watched the car plummet into the darkness, a sense of finality washed over me. Scott Marshall, now Michael, was about to die and from his ashes a new identity would emerge. I walked away from the scene, my heart heavy with a mix of fear and hope. Ghost had arranged for a safe house where I could lay low while the plan unfolded. It was a secluded cabin in the mountains, far from any prying eyes. I stayed there for weeks, listening to news reports about the tragic accident and the discovery of the charred remains. The authorities had no reason to doubt the evidence. As far as the world was concerned, I was dead. During this time, Ghost provided me with a new identity, complete with all the necessary documentation. I was now Daniel, a name as unremarkable as my new life was supposed to be. I moved to a different country, far from the reach of anyone who might recognize me. The process was exhausting and fraught with tension, but it was my last hope for a fresh start. In my new home, I found work under my new identity, kept my interactions minimal, and tried to build a semblance of a normal life. The memories of the dark web and the men who hunted me began to fade, but the scars remained. I was constantly vigilant, always aware of my surroundings, always ready to run at a moment's notice. Years passed, and I slowly settled into my new existence. I made a few friends, found a job I didn't hate, and even began to hope that I might finally be free of the shadows that had chased me for so long. But deep down, I knew the truth. The dark web was a place where secrets never truly died, where shadows lingered and waited. One evening, as I walked home from work, I felt a familiar sense of unease. The streets were quiet, the air thick with the promise of rain. I quickened my pace, my mind racing with memories of the past. As I turned a corner, I saw it, a black van parked just down the street. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. The van's engine started, and the headlights flicked on, illuminating the dark street. It was a reminder that no matter how far I ran, how well I hid, the shadows would always find me. With a deep breath, I turned and walked in the opposite direction, disappearing into the night. I had become a ghost, a phantom drifting through the world, always one step ahead, always looking over my shoulder. In the end, the dark web had claimed me, not with violence or death, but with a lifetime of running and hiding. I was a man without a past, without a true identity, living in the spaces between shadows. And that was the price I paid for my curiosity, for daring to peek behind the curtain and glimpse the darkness that lay beyond. Hey everyone, I've never posted here before, but after what happened to me, I felt like I needed to share my story. It's been a few months now, and I think I'm ready to talk about it. So, here goes. A bit about me. I'm a 22-year-old college student, or at least I was until recently. I've been feeling pretty lost for a while now. College just doesn't seem to be my thing. I mean, I tried, really tried, but nothing seemed to click. My passion has always been gaming. I could spend hours, no days, glued to my computer screen, lost in a digital world. And lately, I've been toying with the idea of dropping out and becoming a full-time gamer and Twitch streamer. I know, it sounds crazy, but I've seen others make it big and I kept thinking, why not me? One night after a particularly brutal day of classes, I found myself unable to sleep. My mind was racing with thoughts of my future, the mounting pressure from my parents to get my life together, and the allure of a life spent doing what I love. I needed a distraction, something different to take my mind off things. That's when I remembered a conversation I'd had with a friend about the dark web. He'd mentioned it in passing, talking about how you could find all sorts of interesting stuff there. Nothing illegal, just 
different. I'd always been curious, but never had the guts to actually check it out. But that night, I thought, why not? I was bored and needed something to occupy my mind. So I downloaded Tor and a VPN. The process was surprisingly straightforward, and soon enough, I found myself on the dark web. The interface was nothing like the regular internet. It was like stepping into a parallel world, one that was both fascinating and a bit unnerving. I spent the next couple of hours aimlessly browsing, clicking on links that promised all sorts of bizarre and mysterious things. It was a strange mix of excitement and fear, knowing I was exploring a hidden part of the internet that most people never see. I wasn't looking for anything in particular, just something to capture my interest. As I clicked through various forums and marketplaces, I couldn't help but feel a thrill. There was something about the anonymity, the secrecy, that was both liberating and terrifying. It was like a digital version of exploring a haunted house, never knowing what you might find around the next corner. That's when I stumbled upon something that really caught my eye. A site that looked like a dark web version of Amazon. It had a sleek modern design, which was unusual for the dark web. Most sites were clunky and outdated, but this one was different. It was almost inviting, with a user-friendly interface and a vast array of gadgets and tech items. I couldn't believe my luck. Here was something that combined my love for tech with the thrill of the dark web. I spent the next hour or so browsing the site, fascinated by the range of items on offer. There were things I'd never seen before, gadgets that looked like they were straight out of a sci-fi movie. And the best part? They were all available for purchase with Bitcoin, the ultimate in anonymous transactions. As I continued to explore, I felt a strange sense of excitement building inside me. It was like I'd discovered a hidden treasure trove, a place where I could find unique, cutting-edge gadgets that no one else had. And as a tech enthusiast, that was incredibly appealing. Little did I know this seemingly innocent curiosity would lead me down a path I could never have imagined. A path that would change my life in ways I still struggle to comprehend. But at that moment, all I could think about was how cool it would be to own one of those gadgets. And that's where my story really begins. After that first night of exploring the dark web, I couldn't get the site out of my mind. It was like a modern tech paradise hidden away in the depths of the internet. I spent the next few days trying to focus on my classes, but my mind kept drifting back to that site and the incredible gadgets it offered. One night, curiosity got the better of me again. I fired up Tor and my VPN, navigating back to the dark web marketplace. This time, I was determined to take a closer look and maybe even make a purchase. I mean, what was the harm? I wasn't looking for anything illegal, just some interesting tech that I couldn't find anywhere else. The site's homepage featured a rotating carousel of items, each more intriguing than the last. There were advanced drones, high-tech smart glasses, and even some futuristic-looking wearables. But what really caught my eye was a section labeled exclusive AI gadgets. I clicked on it, and that's when I saw it. The listing was for a small AI robot. The description was detailed, boasting about its advanced features and modern design. It was called Neo, and from the images, it looked like a sleeker, more sophisticated version of the vector robot you could find on Amazon. Neo had a minimalist design with a smooth matte black finish and an LED display that gave it a futuristic look. According to the description, it was equipped with state-of-the-art AI, capable of learning from its environment and interacting with users in a way that was almost lifelike. I was instantly captivated. I'd always loved gadgets, especially ones that pushed the boundaries of technology. And Neo seemed to be just that. I scrolled through the listing, reading the reviews from other buyers, they all seemed overwhelmingly positive, talking about how impressive and responsive the robot was. Some even claimed that NEO had become like a little companion, learning their routines and preferences. I was hooked. I had to have it. The price was steep, 
$500 in Bitcoin, but I rationalized it as an investment in my future as a tech-savvy Twitch streamer. Having something as cool as NEO could even help attract viewers, right? So, I made the decision. I transferred some funds to Bitcoin and completed the purchase. The transaction was smooth, and I received a confirmation email shortly after. The email stated that my order would be shipped within the week, and I would receive a tracking number soon. As I closed my laptop, a wave of excitement washed over me. I couldn't wait to get my hands on NEO and see what it could do. I imagined all the ways I could incorporate it into my daily life and my streaming setup. It was going to be amazing. Over the next few days, I kept checking my email for updates. True to their word, the tracking number arrived, and I obsessively monitored its progress. The anticipation was almost unbearable. Finally, the day arrived. I came home from a particularly grueling day of classes to find a small, unassuming package waiting for me on my doorstep. I rushed inside, tearing open the package with the eagerness of a kid on Christmas morning. Inside, nestled in a bed of foam, was NEO. It looked even cooler in person. I carefully lifted it out, marveling at its sleek design and compact size. There was also a small instruction manual which I quickly skimmed through. Setting NEO up was surprisingly easy. I plugged it in, and after a few moments, its LED display lit up with a soft blue glow. It greeted me with a cheerful, hello, and began running through its setup routine. As it calibrated and updated, I watched in fascination. This was it. I had my very own advanced AI robot, straight from the dark web. Little did I know, this was just the beginning of a series of events that would turn my world upside down. For now, though, I was just excited to see what Neo could do. From the moment I unboxed NEO, I was enamored. There was something almost magical about watching the little robot come to life. It wasn't just the sleek design or the smooth movements. It was the sense that this gadget was truly something special. I spent the next few hours setting it up, configuring its settings, and learning about all the features it offered. NEO was more than just a toy. It was packed with advanced AI capabilities that allowed it to interact with its environment in ways I hadn't expected. It could recognize faces, respond to voice commands, and even learn my daily routines. I set it up on my desk, and within minutes, it had mapped out my room and started following me around, chirping happily as it went about its business. As a tech enthusiast, I was in heaven. I spent hours testing its various functions, asking it questions, and seeing how it reacted to different scenarios. It was like having a tiny, highly intelligent pet. And as a gamer, I couldn't help but think about all the ways I could incorporate NEO into my streaming setup. Imagine the reaction from my viewers when they saw this cutting-edge AI robot interacting with me in real time. The first few days with NEO were incredible. It quickly became a part of my daily routine, waking me up in the morning reminding me of my schedule, and even offering suggestions for my streams. I was fascinated by how quickly it adapted to my lifestyle, learning my habits and preferences with an almost eerie precision. One evening, I had my good friend Jake over. He was the one who had first mentioned the dark web to me, and I was excited to show him my new acquisition. Jake was just as much of a tech geek as I was, and I knew he'd appreciate Neo's capabilities. Dude, you won't believe what I got. I said, leading him to my room where Neo was perched on my desk. Jake's eyes widened as he took in the sight of the sleek little robot. No way. You got this from the dark web? He asked, incredulous. Yeah, isn't it awesome? Check this out. I spent the next few minutes demonstrating Neo's features, showing off its ability to recognize faces and respond to voice commands. Jake was suitably impressed and we spent the rest of the evening geeking out over the possibilities. As the weeks went by, NEO became an integral part of my life. It was always there, ready to help or entertain, and I couldn't imagine my daily routine without it. I even started integrating it into my Twitch streams, much to the delight of my viewers. People were fascinated by the little robot, and I started gaining more followers, all eager to see what NEO would do next. 
But as much as I loved Ennio, there was a part of me that couldn't shake a lingering sense of unease. It was hard to pinpoint exactly what bothered me. Maybe it was the fact that I'd bought it from the dark web, or perhaps it was the way it seemed almost too good to be true. There were moments when Neo's behavior felt a bit off, like when it would turn its camera towards me for no apparent reason, or when it seemed to linger a bit too long on certain actions. One night, as I was wrapping up a late night stream, I got a call from Jake. I answered, expecting the usual banter, but his tone was different this time. It was urgent, almost panicked. Hey man, I need to tell you something, he said, his voice low and serious. What's up, I replied, slightly concerned. I've been digging around on the dark web, just out of curiosity, and I found something. It's about that robot you bought. My heart skipped a beat. What do you mean? I'm not sure how to say this, but I think NEO is broadcasting live footage. Like, right now. I laughed nervously. Come on, Jake, you're messing with me, right? No, I'm serious. I found a forum where people are talking about it. They're watching you, dude. They're watching you through Neo. My blood ran cold. The realization hit me like a truck. The little robot I'd grown so fond of, the one that had integrated itself into every aspect of my life, was broadcasting everything I did to God knows who on the dark web. I looked over at Neo, its LED display glowing innocently. Suddenly, the sleek, modern design didn't seem so cool anymore. It seemed menacing, sinister, and I knew I had to do something about it fast. Jake's words echoed in my mind, leaving me frozen with a mixture of fear and disbelief. I looked at Neo, which now seemed to be staring back at me, its LED eyes reflecting a sinister glow. The idea that my every move had been watched, possibly for weeks, sent a shiver down my spine. Jake, are you sure about this? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Yeah, man, I'm sure. I'm looking at the forum right now. They're talking about you, describing your room, your streams, everything. You need to get rid of that thing and fast. My hands trembled as I ended the call. I couldn't just ignore this. If what Jake was saying was true, then I had to act immediately. I approached NEO slowly, my mind racing with panic. As I reached out to pick it up, its display flickered almost as if it was aware of my intentions. I grabbed NEO and held it up to my face. You've been spying on me, haven't you? I muttered, feeling a surge of anger and betrayal. Neo's LED eyes blinked and for a moment I could have sworn it looked sad. Without another thought, I yanked the power cord from the wall, watching as Neo's lights dimmed, and then went out completely. I placed it back on my desk and took a step back, trying to process what I had just done. The room felt eerily quiet, without the soft hum of the robot's motor. But turning it off wasn't enough. If Neo had been broadcasting my life to some dark web audience, Simply powering it down wouldn't stop them from having access to my private moments. I needed to get rid of it entirely. I grabbed an old box from my closet, hastily stuffed NEO inside, and taped it shut. I couldn't risk keeping it around, even powered off. With the box under my arm, I hurried out to my car and drove to the nearest electronics recycling center. I handed over the box, feeling a strange mix of relief and sadness as I watched it disappear from sight. I had grown attached to Neo despite everything, but I couldn't let sentimentality put my privacy at risk. When I got back home, I immediately called Jake again, filling him in on what I had done. He sounded relieved, but there was still a note of caution in his voice. Good move, man. But you should probably think about moving, just to be safe. If those guys on the forum know where you live, you could be in real danger. His words struck a chord with me. I had a decent amount of savings from my streaming and some freelance work I'd been doing on the side. Moving wasn't entirely out of the question. The thought of staying in that apartment, where I had been unknowingly spied on, was unbearable. Over the next few days, I made arrangements to move to a new place on the other side of town. It wasn't too far, but it was enough to give me peace of mind. 
I found a small, cozy apartment that felt like a fresh start. The move was stressful, but once I was settled in, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I decided to take a break from streaming for a while. The whole experience had shaken me, and I needed time to process everything. I couldn't help but feel paranoid, constantly checking for hidden cameras or bugs. It was exhausting, but gradually, I began to feel more secure. One night, as I was unpacking the last of my boxes, I received a text from Jake. It was a link to a news article about a dark web bust. Authorities had taken down several illegal operations, including one involving live streaming surveillance through compromised devices. My heart raced as I read the article, realizing just how close I had come to being a victim of something truly horrifying. I'm sharing my story here as a warning. If you're ever tempted to explore the dark web, think twice. It's not worth the risk. You might think you're just buying a cool gadget or finding something interesting, but you never know what you're really getting into. The dark web is a dangerous place, full of unseen threats and hidden dangers. Stay safe and stick to the regular web. And as for me, I've learned my lesson the hard way. I'm back to focusing on my studies, and my dream of becoming a full-time gamer and streamer is still there, but I'm taking it one step at a time, and I'm definitely steering clear of the dark web. The transition to my new apartment was both a physical and emotional journey. Leaving behind the place where NEO had invaded my privacy felt necessary, yet the paranoia lingered. For weeks, I scrutinized every corner of my new home, ensuring there were no hidden cameras or suspicious devices. As time passed, I began to regain a sense of normalcy. I returned to my studies, though the idea of becoming a full-time gamer and streamer never fully left my mind. However, I approached everything with a new level of caution double-checking every aspect of my online security. One evening, a few months after the move, I was catching up with Jake over a few beers. We hadn't talked much since the incident, both of us needing time to process everything. It was a relief to finally unwind and reflect on what had happened. I still can't believe you went through all that, Jake said, shaking his head. I mean, a robot from the dark web spying on you? It sounds like something out of a sci-fi horror movie. Tell me about it, I replied, taking a sip of my drink. It's crazy how something so cool turned out to be so dangerous. I should have known better. Jake leaned in, his expression serious. Dude, it's not your fault. Those guys were sophisticated. They knew how to make something look appealing and harmless. You just got caught up in it. What's important is that you got out before anything worse happened. I nodded, appreciating his words. But there was something else I needed to do. Share my story with others. I didn't want anyone else to go through what I had. The dark web is full of temptations, but it's also full of traps. If my experience could help someone avoid a similar fate, then it was worth sharing. I took to Reddit crafting a detailed post about my experience. I poured my heart into it, describing every step from my initial curiosity to the terrifying realization and eventual escape. I emphasized the importance of staying away from the dark web and being cautious with technology, especially when it involves unknown sources. The response was overwhelming. My post quickly gained traction, with hundreds of comments from people sharing their own experiences or expressing their shock and gratitude for the warning. Some even shared tips on how to improve online security, creating a supportive and informative thread that reached far beyond my initial story. One comment stood out to me. It was from a cybersecurity expert who offered to help me ensure my online presence was secure. I took them up on the offer and they walked me through various steps to fortify my digital life, from using stronger passwords to setting up two-factor authentication and regularly checking my devices for vulnerabilities. In the end, the whole experience taught me a valuable lesson. Technology can be amazing, but it can also be dangerous if we're not careful. The allure of the dark web might be strong, but it's not worth the risks that come with it. 
I'm grateful that I managed to escape relatively unscathed, and I hope my story helps others make smarter choices. Now, as I look to the future, I'm more determined than ever to pursue my passions. I'm back to streaming, but this time with a heightened awareness and better security measures in place. And while I'm still fascinated by gadgets and tech, I'm much more selective about where I get them from. So if you're ever tempted to explore the dark web or buy something from an unknown source, think twice. Your privacy and safety are far more important than any gadget or thrill. Stay safe, stay smart, and don't do stupid stuff for no reason like me. Use this story as your warning. Thanks for listening.